Could your zero calorie sweetener actually making you become hungrier? A brand new study just revealed some shocking effects of sucralose on your brain and appetite. In this video, we're going to break down the latest research on sucralose and how it may be influencing your hunger, metabolism, and even brain activity. If you use artificial sweeteners, you're going to want to hear this. We're going to look at how sucralose changes hypothalamic blood flow, why it might trigger cravings, and how it compares to sugar and water. Then stick around to the very end because what this study found could completely change how you think about diet foods. What's up and welcome to the video. I'm Dr. Daniel Ricciardi, gut health expert, licensed pharmacist, fitness enthusiast, creator of SIBO Shortcut and the gut health supplement bloat blocker. Sucralose is an artificial sweetener that many people, including some doctors, are quite fond of. After all, it's zero calorie and zero sugar. Because of this, it continues to fly a little bit under the radar in terms of acknowledging some of its potential detrimental effects. Fortunately, though, new research continues to come out, including a brand new study that was just released last week. As a quick disclaimer, this video is for informational purposes only and is not intended to provide medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always consult with a qualified healthcare professional before making any changes to your diet or health routine. All right, so what do we already know about sucralose from past studies? This study came out in 2023, and when it did, this was one of the most hotly debated studies I've ever encountered in terms of the back and forth online and between people and social media. So the biggest takeaway from this study, although sucralose doesn't seem to be great for the body, it's technically not even the biggest issue. A substance called sucralose 6-acetate actually is. And the sucralose 6-acetate molecule seems to exist in sucralose, even in the products claiming to be 100% pure sucralose. As evidenced by the study, it seems like this molecule sucralose 6-acetate really cannot be avoided as some of the sucralose 6-acetate is actually formed during the production of sucralose and it was also found to be a common byproduct that is formed in the liver during digestion. With that said, there are going to be people, there were in the past, there probably still will be in the future, that are going to be getting completely red in the face at the suggestion that sucralose may be detrimental to your health. I'm not 100% sure why this is the case unless there are people that are working for companies like Splenda or maybe they've had clients use products like this in the past and have good results. I'm not 100% sure. There have been some influencers talking about this study and saying that somebody would need to drink 6,000 sucralose containing beverages a day for somebody to actually harm themselves. To quickly address this myth, this comment or study that's often referenced when regards to this 6,000 sucralose containing beverages per day, this study tested only for sucralose. It did not look for sucralose 6 acetate whatsoever, which is a completely different substance. Let's be very clear. There's also the argument that sometimes gets made that sucralose does not get absorbed very well. While this may technically be the case, this sucralose 6-acetate, which we just confirmed definitely exists and definitely is present in beverages claiming to be 100% pure sucralose, this sucralose 6-acetate gets absorbed very well. In fact, the 2023 study found that the sucralose 6-acetate actually lingers around in the body for over 11 days. I mentioned the liver converting some of the sucralose to sucralose 6-acetate. This also seems to happen for the 2023 study, increasing the levels of sucralose 6-acetate by 20 times or even more. The study referencing 6,000 sucralose containing beverages a day to cause an issue was also only a single day study. So it does not account for any accumulation. After all, most people, if they're having a diet soda or something with Splenda, they're not just going to have it for one day. It's probably something that they drink regularly day after day, month after month. So in summary, these are the five things that you really should know from the previous study involving sucralose. Number one, sucralose is not ideal for your body. Yes, there may be some debate whether the sucralose is actually detrimental or if it's neutral having no effect on the body, but the sucralose isn't the biggest issue. It's the sucralose 6-acetate, which exists, does not seem like it can be avoided, and the levels are increased when sucralose gets metabolized by the liver. Number two, both sucralose and sucralose 6-acetate contribute to leaky gut. Number three, sucralose 6-acetate was found to break DNA strands. Breaking DNA strands is bad because this, this makes it more likely to prematurely age and may increase the risk of cancer. Number four, this study found that sucralose 6-acetate can activate genes that increase inflammation and are linked to making cancer more likely. And lastly, number five, this study found that DNA damage may be possible with the consumption of normal quantities of sucralose containing beverages, not 6,000. All right, so this new study just came out in the past few weeks, end of March, 2025. Non-caloric sweetener effects on brain appetite regulation in individuals across varying body weights. So there's 75 people in this study aged 18 to 35, and they varied from healthy weight, overweight to obese. The main thing that
that they were trying to determine in this study are how water, sugar, which was referred to as sucrose in this, and then sucralose, the artificial sweetener, impact the amount of hypothalamic, which is part of the brain, blood flow. It's been previously studied and understood that the more blood flow that's going on in the hypothalamus, the more likely that individual is to feel hunger and appetite. All right, as for takeaways for this study, if we look at this chart right here, it basically describes what's going on in the brain that's responsible for cravings, appetite, and hunger. The higher this is, the more cravings, the hungrier, the more appetite this person will have. And on the bottom, we have water, sucrose, and sucralose. And then the green bar is for healthy weight individuals. The yellow is for overweight and the reds for obese. So what takeaways are we drawing from this? The first, if we go all the way to the right, sucralose. It seems like pretty much across the board, when sucralose is ingested, this hypothalamic response is elevated. Meaning even though somebody's ingesting an artificial sugar, artificial sweetener with zero calories, it suggests that these patients are gonna be craving food, hungrier, having a bigger appetite. That's takeaway number one. Takeaway number two, sugar or sucrose seems to have an opposite effect on patients of a healthy weight. As you see this bar compared to water, it actually decreases the hypothalamic response, meaning that patients with a healthy weight, if they're having sucrose or regular sugar, it seems to curb their appetite or make them not as hungry. On the other hand, with sucrose, if somebody is obese, it seems like even though it's sugar and not sucralose, any type of sweetener or like sweet sensation that's hitting the brain may actually be making them more hungry. So there's a little bit of a difference in response based on weight. So tying into conclusion number two, obese may actually be having an impact on the way that the brain is sending signals throughout the body to control hunger. And then a third finding from the study was that sucralose actually increased the activity between the hypothalamus and the other brain regions that are involved in the reward and motivation pathways. So this continues to suggest that consuming sucralose may influence food cravings and the body's response to sweet tastes. All right, those are the three main takeaways. So what this means, this study supports the idea that sucralose may confuse the brain's normal appetite signals, potentially leading to increased hunger and food-seeking behavior, especially in individuals with obesity. That is all for today. If you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification button so you get notified every time I post new content. If you're new to my channel, I post a new full-length video every Monday in YouTube Shorts throughout the week. In the comment section below, let me know your thoughts on this video and thoughts on the ongoing debate involving sucralose. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.